this verse. You go get this verse. You go get this verse. You go get this verse. The law is the light. You go get this verse. 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 You go get this so what we gonna start doing is making videos. So remember, we ain't running from nothing. The men of the Lord don't run from nothing. No questions. We gonna answer your questions. We gonna get to them as soon as we can. Now, what we uh, gonna bring out today that Jesus keep the Sabbath. Cause you got a lot of deep dummies out here saying, I like to call them Pharisees. Because every time we talking about keep the Sabbath, they say, well, Christ broke the Sabbath. Christ didn't keep the Sabbath. Then they say it ain't recorded that Christ kept the Sabbath. So what we're going to prove to y'all today, that Christ indeed did keep the Sabbath. That Christ, uh, that we still can keep the high holy days in captivity. And that the only law that Christ did with is the law of sacrifice. So the name of this lesson that we're going to bring out today is Jesus kept the Sabbath. Let's start at, uh, let's start at Matthew 4, verse 23, bro. Matthew chapter 4 and verse 23. And, and Jesus went about all gaily, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Now stop right there. Read it again one more time, bro. And Jesus went about all gaily, teaching in their synagogues. So he was doing what? Teaching in their synagogues. Read on. And preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Read. And healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. So it said Jesus, or... We gonna speak for speak some Hebrew for, for some of you Hebrew speaking brothers. Yehoshua, it said, uh, went about all Galilee teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Now let's get another scripture. Let's see what uh, we gonna get to the point. We gonna show you what day he was teaching on. Let's go to uh, Luke four and sixteen real quick. Let's go to Luke four and sixteen. See, we tired of you deep dummies. Step into us like we don't know what we talking about and like we don't know the Bible. So just to prove to y'all that Christ did keep the Sabbath, even though y'all saying it's nowhere recorded that Christ kept the Sabbath, I'm going to show you that it's recorded that Christ kept the Sabbath. Give me Luke 4 verse 16, bro. Luke chapter 4 and verse 16. And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath Hold day. Hold on, so first of all, we just read in Matthew 4 and 23 that he was teaching in the synagogues. Now right here, Luke 4 and 16, read that one more time, bro. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, as his custom was. Hold on, as his what? Custom was. As his what? Custom was. You say, as his custom was. What is a custom or tradition? Something you do uh, repeatedly. You do often. It's a custom. Something that you do. Read on. He went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. So Christ was going around teaching on the Sabbath day. That's why the Israelites go up. That's why us Israelites Go around and teach on the uh, Sabbath day because why? Remember, uh, First Peter two and one twenty one said Christ left, left us an example of the steps that we should follow. We gonna get to that too. So read that again, bro. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, as his custom was. He went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day 
and stood up for to read. So it was a custom for Christ to teach on the Sabbath day and go to the synagogues. Matter of fact, let's prove this even more. Let's go back to Matthew. Let's go to 9 verse 35 this time. Let's go to 9 verse 35. See, we've been approved to you that Christ was keeping the Sabbath day. Read. Matthew chapter 9 and verse 35. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom. So hold on. It said, and Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues. There was a custom for him to do, to go around in the different cities and the villages and teach in the synagogue. And when he was doing this, this was on the Sabbath day. Why? Because on the Sabbath day, it's commanded for the people to come together in a holy gathering. And now let, let's go back. Let's go from there. Let's go to Luke 4 and 31. Let's go back to Luke 4. So Christ was always teaching in different cities, going to different villages on the city gun. I mean in the synagogues. And this proves something to, to, uh, to, to you Facebook relics. You Facebook, if we striving to be Christ-like, how the hell you uh, spread the gospel and you just sitting at the house in one place? Christ, we supposed to follow the Christ steps. That means we supposed to do the things that he did. If Christ went from different cities to villages, guess what we got to do? We got to go to, uh, from different cities uh, from different cities to villages too. So let's go to uh, Luke 4 verse 31. Luke chapter 4 and verse 31. And he came down to, to, to Capernaum. Read it again. And, and came down to Capernaum, Read. a city of Galilee, Read. and taught them on the Sabbath days. Hold on, did it say day or days? Days. It said taught them on the Sabbath days. Christ was always teaching on the Sabbath days in different cities and villages in their synagogues. It's time for y'all to wake the hell up. Y'all don't know what the hell y'all talking about. Now look, read that from the top again. Christ did teach the Sabbath day, and with this scripture right here, this scripture right here is the cut for you uh, so-called wannabe deep dummies alone. Read that again, bro. Luke chapter 4 and verse 31. And came down to Capernaum, a city of Galilee, and taught them on the Sabbath days. Read. And they were astonished at his doctrine. Now, oh, oh, listen to that. It said they were what? Astonished at his doctrine. They said they was astonished of, uh, of his doctrine. So hold on. Now I said they was astonished of his doctrine. Let's see what doctrine that Christ was preaching. Let's go to John 7 verse 16. Let's see the uh, doctrine that Christ was teaching. John chapter 7 and verse 16. Jesus answered them. My doctrine is not mine. So Christ said, my doctrine is not mine. Christ said, hold on. Go back to Je hold, go back to uh, Luke 4 and 31 again. I mean 32. Luke 4 and 32. And then we're going right back to John 7 and 16. Just hold that one. Luke chapter 4 and verse 32. And they were astonished at his doctrine. So it said they was astonished at his doctrine. But let's see what Christ going to say in John 7 verse 16 again. Read. John chapter 7 and verse 16. Jesus answered them. My doctrine is not mine. But his that sent me. He said look my doctrine ain't mine. But his that sent me. What is a doctrine? A doctrine is a teaching. He was teaching what the most High sent him to teach. He was teaching the law, statutes, and commandments. So guess what? That's why he was in the synagogues on the Sabbath days. Guess what he was doing? He was keeping the Sabbath holy as commanded to. And we're going to prove that. Because remember, Christ was found without sin. And we're going to show you what sin is. Now read that again. Verse 16. John chapter 7 and verse 16. Jesus answered them, My doctrine is not mine. But he is that sent me. So Christ said, my doctrine ain't mine, but he is who sent me. But they was astonished at the doctrine of, uh, that he was teaching. Why? Because they weren't keeping the laws during this time. Read on. If any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine. Now I said, now if any man shall do his will, he shall know of the doctrine. Now go to Psalm 40 verse 8, bro. Go to what's the will of the Most High God? Let's see what David going to tell you the will of the Most High is. Time for y'all to wake the hell up, man, and quit coming against us so much. See, when we are on the streets, we can't address everything. Different. That's why we said we're gonna start doing, we gonna start doing these videos here in the classrooms. Cause man, we gonna start getting to the bottom of that. When y'all hearing us out on the streets, we going back and forth. That is spiritual warfare. 
Now we ain't mad all day. Now we don't holler all day. But Isaiah 50, 81, the most high tells us to cry loud and spur not. We don't care how you feel. We rolling with the most high God. Christ didn't care how the Pharisees felt. He didn't care about how none of them felt. Remember it said Christ was an austere man. Meaning austere means morally strict. When it came to the Father law, he didn't play. And it's going to be the same thing with us. We try, we striving to be Christ-like. Now give me what you got for me, bro. So let's see what the will of the Most High God is. Psalms chapter 40 and verse 8. I delight to do thy will, O oh my God. So David said, I have delight to do thy will, O oh my God. Read. Yea, thy law is, with, is within my heart. So he said, thy law is within thy heart. So the Most High will is his law. Now let's go back to John 7 verse 16. John chapter 7 and verse 16. Jesus answered them, my doctrine is not mine. So Christ said, look, man, my doctrine is not mine, read. But he is that sent he me. He is that sent me. He was teaching the most high teachers. What the most high said for before the, uh, since the beginning of time. Because the law's been here since Genesis, believe it or not, read on. Um, if any man would do his will. If any man do his will, meaning keep his law, read. He shall know of the doctrine. You would have known of the doctrine. You, they would have known of what Christ was teaching if they was doing the most high will, read. Whether it be of God. Whether it be of God. Or whether I speak of myself. Or whether he speak of himself. So who was Christ speaking for? Christ was speaking for the most high. Now let's go back to Luke 4 verse 31. We're going to start at 31 again. Luke chapter 4 and verse 31. And came down to Capernaum, a city of Galilee. And taught them on the Sabbath day. So he was teaching on the Sabbath days. What he was teaching, read. And they were astonished at his doctrine. He was teaching his father's doctrine. He was teaching his father's laws, read. For his word was with power. His word was with power. Why was with power? Hold on, let's go to Hebrews 4 and 12 real quick. Because it's y'all ain't understanding how powerful that the word of God is. Read Hebrews 4 and 12. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12. For the word of God is quicked and powerful. Is what? Is quicked and powerful. Is what? Quicked and powerful. He said the word of God is quick and powerful. That's why I said Christ's words was with power. Because he was teaching his father laws. Read. And sharper than any two-edged sword. Read. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and his and is a descender of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So he was teaching the word of God. Why? Why they say his word was with power? Because he said the word of God is quick and powerful. He was teaching his father's doctrine. His doctrine wasn't his own. It's time for y'all to wake the hell up. Y'all need to repent. Talking about Christ didn't teach the uh, keep the Sabbath. He said, look, if you were doing the will, you will know that the doctrine that he was teaching wasn't here. So this let you know that Christ didn't come with no new doctrine. Christ came with the same thing that Moses gave uh that, that Moses gave the children of Israel. The only thing Christ did away with is the law of sacrifice, and we're gonna prove that. Now let's go to John 15 and 10. John 15, verse 10. Y'all need to repent of your weakness, you deep dummies. John chapter 15 and verse 10. If ye keep my commandments. Ye shall abide in my love. So hold on now. It said, if you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love. Read. Even as I have kept my father's so commandments. So hold on now. Christ said, even as I have kept my father's commandments. So Christ kept the most high commandments. So hold on. Let's get one of the commandments. Let's go to Exodus 20 verse 8. Let's go to Exodus 20 verse 8. He said he kept his father commandments. See, I told you, we were going to prove to you that Christ kept the Sabbath. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thou God. So start right there. Christ kept the Sabbath day. He said he kept his father commandments. Let's get Exodus 31 real quick. Let's get Exodus 31. Christ kept his father's commandments. Christ kept the Sabbath. Talking about Christ didn't keep no Sabbath day. The hell wrong with y'all? 12. Uh, 31 verse 13. Yeah, it's out at 12. Exodus chapter 31 and verse 12. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, 
Speak thou also unto the children of Israel, saying, Verily, my Sabbath ye shall keep. Saying what? Verily, my Sabbaths ye, sh ye shall keep. Read on. For it is a sign between me and you throughout your generation. Hey, look. The, the Sabbath is a sign between the children of Israel and the Most High throughout all our generations. Read. That ye may know that I am the Lord, that I am the Lord, that do sanctify you. Read. Ye shall keep the Sabbath therefore, for it is holy unto you. Everyone that defile it shall surely be put to death. The Most High don't even play about his Sabbath. Christ kept the Sabbath. Why? Because the Most High don't play about the Sabbath. He said, look, man, you don't keep my Sabbath. Everybody should be put to death. Read on, bro. For whoso do any work therein, that soul shall be cut off from amongst his people. So look, now in this day of time, we can't put nobody to death for not keeping the Sabbath. But look, read that again, uh, that bottom part, for whosoever. For whosoever do any work therein, that soul shall be cut off from amongst his people. You want to know why so much confusion going on? You want to know why uh, you, you losing understanding of this Bible? Especially some of you so-called repentant Israelites. Who think you don't have to keep the Sabbath? They think you don't got to keep the laws. That's crazy when a repentant Israelite think you don't got to keep the laws. You want to know why? The Most High cut you off from among the people. When, uh, you, you don't get put to death for not keeping the Sabbath now. But trust me, the Most High will cut you off from among the people. So when all the confusion starts coming up, next thing you know, you, uh, you, you forgot who Edom is. You forgot who Ham is. Matter of fact, you don't even think you're Israelite no more. Why is that? Because now confusion then came and you better get, be cut off from among the people. Now you want to fill up out the truth. Why? Because you won't keep God's laws, man. Read on down, bro. Six days may work be done, but in the, but in the seventh is the Sabbath of rest. They say six days may work be done. That's a commandment to work for six days. To work. You got within six days to do your work. That's a commandment. That's a commandment for a man to get a job to work. Read. Holy to the Lord. Whosoever do any work in the Sabbath day, he shall surely be put to death. Read on, bro. Wherefore, the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath to observe the Sabbath through, through, throughout their generations for a perpetual covenant. So look, this is a covenant. This is a perpetual covenant. He said, look, we should observe the Sabbath throughout all our generations. Christ didn't do it where he kept. He said, look, I kept my father's commandments in John 15 and 10. Do Christ's words. Get your book that got the red right in so you can see who said it. Read on, bro. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel. He's Hold on. Read that from the top again, 17. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel. It is a sign between who? Between me and the children of Israel. Read. Forever. 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 We got to keep the Sabbath. Guess what? Forever. It's a sign between the children of Israel and the Most High. Forever. So Christ didn't come to do away with the, uh, with the Sabbath. Christ didn't come to do away with his father's law. Christ kept his laws. When he came, Matthew 5, he was teaching the law and he was enforcing the law and he was, matter of fact, that's why he said, look, matter of fact, we're going to go back to John 15 and 10. I'm going to show you something. Uh, read on real quick, bro. Let's finish that up. Bro, start at 17 again. Verse 17. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. Now let's just go back to John 15 and 10. I'm going to show y'all something. Y'all think we don't know what the hell we be talking about when we be out on the streets. Y'all think we just go out there and holler at people. For real though, we trying to be Christ-like. Keep the commandments. What's wrong with keeping the commandments? Yesterday when we was out teaching on the Sabbath, guess what? It was a wreck happened. Two wrecks happened. One woman ran through a pole and hit a house. Another person hit another car right there directly in the street. Guess what? If they was observing the Sabbath, it wouldn't have never happened. Let's uh, John 15 and 10. John chapter 15 and verse 10. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love. Now look, this is what I was going to show you. Now Christ said, look, if you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love. What are some of the commandments Christ gave us? Let's go to Matthew 5 real quick. 
I just want to I just want to touch on something real quick, and we ain't finna go off topic. I just want to show you something. Because remember, Christ was teaching his father's commandments, but Christ gave commandments too. Let's start at uh, Matthew 5, verse 27. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 27. Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time. So it says, you have heard that it uh, you have heard that it was said by them of old time, read. Thou shalt not commit adultery. That was said in Exodus 20, verse 14. That's why he said, you heard about that. Now listen to what Christ's command read. But I say unto you. But I say unto you, read. That whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her, have committed adultery with her already in his heart. So my Christ made even stricter. And he got, that was a commandment he got. He said, but look, I say unto you. I say unto you. Whosoever look up at the woman, whoever, whosoever look at a woman to look lust after, you have committed adultery in your heart already. Now go back to John 15 and 10. That's just one little example I want to show you. Man, y'all need to wake the hell up. Y'all don't even understand the Bible. That's why we commanded to read the Bible precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little and there a little. Some of y'all think y'all so know so much, y'all won't even get the Israelites a chance. That's right. And then y'all want us to try out the other doctrines. How you know we ain't already tried out your doctrine? How we know we how do you know we didn't already try it that way? Because we know you didn't try to keep the laws. Because uh, the laws shall be found perfect with our lives. According to Ecclesiastes 34, verse 8. By the time for y'all to wake the hell up, read that again, John 15 and 10. John chapter 15 and verse 10. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love. So Christ said, if you can keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love. Because he gave a commandment too right there in Matthew 5, verse 27. Read. Even as I have kept my father's commandments. And he kept his father's commandments. That means the Sabbath day. Christ wore fringes. Uh, if uh, if uh, Christ had a beard during that time, guess what? Christ wore a beard. Christ kept the commandments. Christ kept the high holy days. And we're going to get to that too, saying that we can't keep the high holy days in captivity. I'm going to show y'all some. See, that's why 2 Timothy 2 and 15 say, 2 Timothy 2 and 15 say, Study to show thyself approval to the Lord thy God. I ain't worried about man. I ain't worried about man. I'm trying to prove myself to the most high. Read on, bro. I mean, uh, was that it on that? Okay, read John 15 and 10 one more time. John chapter 15 verse 10. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. So Christ kept his Father's commandments. And Christ said, look, you need to keep my commandments too. And we're supposed to keep his Father. Hold on, go to 1 Peter 2 and 21. I told you we were going to get here. We were going to get here. 1 Peter 2, verse 21. Now let me show you something called everybody saying, well, look. Matter of fact, let's start at Deuteronomy 18 and 15 real quick. 18. I mean, Deuteronomy 18, verse 18. Deuteronomy chapter 18 and verse 18. I will rise them up a prophet from among the, their brethren. So now Moses, now the Most High told Moses that he was going to raise up the Israelites a prophet from among their brethren. Read. Like unto thee. Like just like like unto Moses, read. And I will put my words in his mouth. Read. And he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. Read. And it shall come to pass that whosoever will not argue unto my words, which he shall speak in my name, I will I will require it of him. So Christ was speaking in the most high name. And they said we're supposed to hearken unto Christ. Now Christ said, look, keep his commandments. As the same as he had kept his father's commandments. Now let's see that Christ sinned. Let's go to 1 Peter 2 and 21. 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 21. For even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example. Christ did what? Leaving us an example. Read. That ye should follow his steps. So if Christ was left as an example, that we should follow his steps. He said, keep my commandments as also as I can keep my father commandments. Guess what we're supposed to do? We're supposed to keep the father commandments. We're supposed to keep the Sabbath day. Because read on. Let's hold on. Let's see that he, he break one of these laws. Read on. 
Who did no sin? Who did what? Who did no sin? Christ did sin. What is sin? First John 3 and 4. Y'all think we don't know what the hell we got the ones who don't know what y'all talking about. And y'all gonna die for that if you don't repent. First John chapter 3 and verse 4. Whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. Sin is what? It's the transgression of the law. Transgress means to break or violate. Sin is the breaking or violating of God's law. Christ even told you John 15 and 10. He said, look, I kept my father's commandments. I kept my father's commandments. Now let's read 1 Peter 2 and 21 again. 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 21. For even hereunto we were ye called. Because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. If we're supposed to follow somebody's steps, that means, okay, if Christ kept the Sabbath, if we don't keep the Sabbath or if we don't keep the laws, guess what? We ain't following in the steps of Christ. We're going a, a whole nother route. But guess what? If, if Christ walking this way, walking this path. And we walk in that path right along with him. He keeping the law. We keep we falling in his steps. If Christ was teaching uh in, in the cities and the villages uh, on the Sabbath day, and you teaching in the cities and the villages on the Sabbath day, guess what? You following his steps. Time for y'all to wake the hell up, man. Repent. And return back to these laws. Matter of fact, I'm gonna show you why you don't got the understanding and why you think Christ didn't keep the law. You know what I want. Psalms 111. Then we're going to go right back to 1 Peter 2. Psalms chapter 111 and verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. First of all, the fear, the fear, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Read. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. It's a good understanding that have all they that do, that do his commandments. The commandment was you will be cut off upon, among your people. I mean, the, the judgment, the commandment is keep the Sabbath. And the judgment for breaking the Sabbath is that you will be put to death or cut off from among your people. But you don't fear God. You don't fear that you're going to be cut off from among your people. You don't fear that you're going to be put to death for not keeping the Sabbath. Because at the end of the day, when Christ comes back, guess what? If you ain't deserving the Sabbath, you're going to die. Time for y'all to wake up. You got it. Christ kept the laws. Back to 1 Peter 2 and 21. 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 21. For even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example, that ye should follow his steps. So we're supposed to follow the steps of Christ, read. Who did no sin. Christ didn't break God's laws. So guess what? If he didn't break God's laws, guess what we got to do? We got to keep the law. Read. Neither was God found in his mouth. All you Israelite counts that like to wish their phone brothers. Uh, God wasn't found in your Howard shy mouth. God wasn't found in Yahweh's shy mouth. We should deal for our brother. That's why he said, uh, warn to you scribes and Pharisees. For you compare C and Lana to get you one proselyte, to get you one convert, and you make him two times the child of hell that he already is. A lot of you brothers, y'all ain't never wish nobody deal for nobody in your life till you came into the truth. And now you think it's all right to do it now. Time for y'all to wake the hell up. God wasn't found in the Howard Shot mouth. Oh, let's get 2 Corinthians 5 and 21. So Christ kept the Sabbath. Christ kept the commandments. The law ain't done away with it. We've been approved that too. But before we go to that, we've been to show you that. Because you, you got people talking about, oh, you can't keep the high holy days in captivity. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 21. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin. Who did what? Who knew no sin. Christ didn't break God's laws, y'all. Christ, even Paul said Christ didn't. Peter said Paul didn't break God's laws. Now Paul said Christ didn't break God's laws. The, uh, break the most high laws. It's time for y'all to wake the hell up. Open your eyes to the truth. Get this, get this truth a shot. Give me Hebrews 4 and 15. Get a law a shot. We tried it. We tried it any other way. Get a law a shot though. Hebrews 4 verse 15. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 15. For we have not an high priest 
which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are. Christ was tempted just like we still tempted to this day. Read. Yet without sin. Yet without sin. He still didn't commit no sin though. Christ still didn't commit sin. He didn't fall into his temptation. Remember when Satan took him up on that very high mountain. Now, let's go to Deuteronomy 16 and 16. Because remember, Christ kept the high holy day. So do we supposed to keep the, still keep the high holy day since we're in the land of our captivity? Or is, uh, or is it, uh, I mean, uh, put it like this. I, uh, let me rephrase it. A guy told me I can't worship my God because I can't go to Jerusalem three times a year. And I can't still observe the high holy days in my captivity. So we've been to prove to y'all now that you can observe the high holy days in captivity. Now, let's go to Deuteronomy 16 and 16. See, we don't run from no script. We get the scripture that you want. We know what scripture you want. Even if you can't pull it, we know what you want to go to. We're going to go to it for We don't run from nothing. Read what you got, bro. Deuteronomy chapter 16 and verse 16. Three times in a year shall all thou males appear before the Lord thou God. So the commandment was three times in a year shall all thy males appear before the Lord thy God. Read. In the, in the place which he shall choose. It say in the place which he shall choose. Read. In the feast of unleavened bread. In the feast of unleavened bread or the, or the Passover. Read. And in the feast of weeks. Read. And in the feast of tabernacle. Read. And they shall not appear before the Lord empty. Hold on. It said they shall not appear before the Lord empty. So it said three times a year during, uh, during three main high holy days. Guess what? We had to show up in Jerusalem. And we had to pray before the Lord. And guess what? We could show up empty. Now, why did he say don't come empty? Let's see what we was doing and why we had to go to Jerusalem. Let's go to Exodus 23. Let's see why we had to go to Jerusalem. Let's go to Exodus 23. We're going to start at 14. Talking about we can't worship our God in captivity. Man, y'all out y'all mind. Y'all find any reason not to keep the law. You love Christmas. The same dude, I said, you celebrate Christmas. He said, uh, at least you can get some free gifts. I said, Christmas ain't in the Bible. He said, at least you can get some free gifts. He said, I said, he's staying in the Bible. At least you get some eggs. Mm. You talking about pure wickedness. Give me uh, Exodus 23, verse 14, bro. Exodus chapter 23 and verse 14. Three times thou shalt keep a feast unto me so, in the year. So Christ said, three times thou shalt keep a feast to me in the year. Read. Thou shalt I mean, the Most High said three times, Thou shalt keep a feast unto me in the year, read. Thou shalt keep the feast of unleavened bread, read. Thou shalt eat unleavened bread seven days, as I commanded thee in, thou, in the time appointed of the month and it, it, for a bill. It, a bill. For in it thou camest out from Egypt, and none shall appear before me empty. So, now nah, the Most High said, And none shall appear before me empty. Let's show you why we was going. To the temple on these three major high holy days. Let's see what we was going there for and why he said don't appear empty. Read on. And the feast of harvest, the feet, the first fruits of thou labors, which thou hast sown in the field, and the feast of ingathering, which is in the end of the year, when thou hast gathered in thou labors out of the field, three times in the year all thou male shall appear before the Lord. Read God. Thou shalt not offer the blood of my sacrifice with living bread. Neither shall the fat of my sacrifice remain until the morning. So guess what we was doing? Guess why we appeared before the Lord three times a year? We was offering a sacrifice in the place that he chose. We was offering a sacrifice. We had to offer a But now since Christ came and we going to show you. We don't sacrifice no more. That's the only law Christ did away with. That's going to lead us next to, into our next gen. Uh, the law of sacrificing animals for sin. That's the only thing Christ done away with. Now let's go to 1 Corinthians 3 and 11. Somebody I can't worship my God in captivity because I'm not able to go to uh, the temple. I'm going to show you something that's going to cut you up. 1 Corinthians 3 and 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 11. For, for other foundation can no man lay 
then there is laid, which is Jesus Christ. So now it's a new foundation laid. And the new foundation is Jesus Christ. Let's get first Peter's matter of fact, uh yeah, let's get first Peter's two and four and eight. First Peter's two, start at four. We're gonna read all the way down to eight. So it's a new foundation laid, which is Christ. See first Peter two? Yeah. Four and eight. Yeah, now nah, first Peter chapter two, let's start at verse four. We're gonna read down to eight. Alright. First Peter chapter two and verse four. To whom coming as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious. Ye all ye also as living lively stones are built up a spiritual house. Oh, a spiritual house, a spiritual temple, a spiritual place to worship. It said, ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house. Read. And and holy priesthood. To do what? To offer up spiritual sacrifice. To offer up a spiritual sacrifice. Let's read on, man. Hey, I love this Bible. Make you rejoice. Read. Acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Read on. Wherefore it is contained in the scripture. Read. Behold, I lay in the I lay. I lay in Zion. I lay in Zion, a chief cornerstone, elect, precious. And he that believe on him shall not be confounded. Read on. Unto you, therefore, which believe, he is precious. But unto them which is disobedient, the stone which the builders disallow, the same is made the head of the corner. So I say the, son, the stone that the builders has disallowed is made the head of the corner. That stone is talking about Christ. Christ is their cornerstone. Read on. And a stone of stumbling. And a rock of offense. It says a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. Read. Even to them which stumble at the word. Even to y'all that keep stumbling at the word. Repent. Come back to the law, statutes, and commandments. The most high still, I mean Christ still a rock of offense to you, read. Being disobedient, were until also they were appointed. Now give me Matthew 6 and 18. Give me Matthew 6 and 18. I mean 16 and 18. And we're going to go back to 1 Peter 2. Because I don't know. Y'all might just soak that in. That 1 Peter 2 deep as hell. You might just soak that in. It might went right over your head. Let's get Matthew 6, 16 and 18. Matthew chapter 16 and verse 18. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter. And upon this rock I will build my church. My Christ said and upon this rock will I build my church. Read. And the gates of hell shall not prevail and against it. And the gates it. of hell shall not prevail against it. Now hold on. Go to 1 Corinthians 10 verse 4 real quick. First Corinthians 10 verse 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 4. And did all drink the same spiritual drink? For they drank of the spiritual rock that followed them. And that rock was Christ. The rock is Christ. It's a new foundation laid. Now we are the Christ. We ain't sacrificing animals for sin no more. Now let's go back to 1 Peter 2 and 4 real quick. Matter of fact. Let's start at, uh, yeah, start at 4. 1 Peter 2 and verse 4. Yeah, 2 verse 4. 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 4. To whom coming as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious, ye also as, li as lively stones are built up a, a, a spiritual house. So I said, look, we have built up a spiritual house now, our spiritual temple. We one body in Christ. Read on. And, and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifice. We offer a spiritual sacrifice now. So guess what? Now we can't go to Jerusalem. Why? Because uh the rock, I mean the foundation is built upon Christ now. And Christ gave us a warning. Let's go to, let's go to John 4, verse 21, real quick. Now let me show you something real quick. Because see, y'all say we can't worship at the temple, but listen to what Christ told this Samaritan one. John chapter 4 and verse 21. Read. Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye, when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Hold on. Read that again, bro. Jesus said unto her, 
woman, believe me, the hour coming. He said, the hour coming, read. When ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. So Christ, uh, Christ said, the hour going to come when you shall neither in this mountain, neither or in Jerusalem worship the Father. So do that mean we stop worshiping the Father? Hell, no, that don't mean uh, we stop worshiping the Father. Let's prove that. Jump down to verse 23. Verse 23. Hell, now that don't mean we stop worshiping the Father, read. But, but the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. So I said, look, now, you say, but the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. What is truth? You know, you know what I want, bro. Psalms chapter 19, verse 142. 119. Yeah, Psalms chapter 119, verse 142. Thou righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thou law is the truth. So we're going to worship the Most High by keeping his laws. And guess what? The high holy days, we got to keep the high holy days. He said, look, we ain't going to be able to work the time coming. We ain't going to be able to worship in Jerusalem no more. We're going to have to worship the Father, the Spirit, and the truth. What is Spirit? John 6, verse 63. Don't mean we stop worshiping the most high because we can't worship in Jerusalem no more. He said the time come that you ain't gonna worship in Jerusalem. John 6, verse 63. John chapter 6 and verse 63. It is the spirit that quicken, the flesh profited nothing. The words that I spake unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So we're gonna stop, we're gonna do what this Bible say. That's how we're gonna worship God. Do it what this Bible say, keeping his laws. He said the hour going to come when you ain't going to worship in this mount or Jerusalem. So we don't stop worshiping God. How we going to worship? He said the true false, the true worshiper going to worship him in spirit and in truth. Y'all need to repent of y'all wickedness. Why did he tell us for the hour coming that you would need to worship at Jerusalem or in this mount? Now let's go back to Luke 21 and 24. Luke 21 and 24. Luke chapter 21 and verse 24. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captive into all nations. So the uh, Christ told us that we was going to be fall, for we was going to fall by the edge of the sword and be led away captive into all nations. Read. Shall be trotted down. And what? And shall be trotted down. Now read that again. You missed something. And you... And Jerusalem, and Jerusalem, read, shall be trotted down, read, of the Gentiles, read, until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. So had the times of the Gentiles been fulfilled yet? No. So who over there in Jerusalem? Who trotting down in Jerusalem? The Gentiles. That's why he said. That's why he said the time gonna come. You ain't gonna be able to worship in this mount or in Jerusalem. Why? Cause it's gonna be trotted down by the Gentiles to the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Give you proof that Revelation 2 and 9, he said, I know the black man ain't be of them who say they are Jews. Them Gentiles over there. Because the black man ain't been calling himself the Jew. Time for y'all to wake the hell up and repent. He said, look, now upon Christ have we built up. Uh, now upon Christ. Go to uh, Matthew 16 and 18 again, man. Let's go back there. And we ain't making nothing up. Let me be alive. Let the words in this Bible be true, though. Nobody ain't making nothing up. Ain't, no, ain't nobody flip nothing. I ain't flip not one scripture. Y'all don't know the scriptures though. Read what you got. Matthew chapter 16 and verse 18. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. So upon Christ, we uh Christ, upon his name, upon Christ, that he gonna be at this church. Christ is the new foundation. Read on, bro. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against Now, let's it. go back to 1 Peter 2 and 4. I mean, 2 and 5. All right. All right. Yeah. 1 yeah. Peter chapter 2 and verse 5. Yea, also, also, as lively stones are built up a spiritual house. It says, so ye... Also, is live this stones. He said, "Ye, ye, you, you, you repent to Israelites. Ye also, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house. That's why he said, those who gonna worship the Father, 
You're going to worship him in spirit and truth. What it means to be spiritual? Romans 17 and 14. The law is spiritual. You're going to keep the laws. Even though we can't go to Jerusalem and worship. Why? Jerusalem has been tried down by the Gentiles. Read on, bro. And holy priesthood. To offer up spiritual sacrifices. To offer up spiritual sacrifices. Because now, guess what? Three times a year, now, the law sacrifice done away with. So how are we going to go out? What, what are we going to... Uh, remember he said, three times a year, you go to Jerusalem. and You better not come empty. Why? Because you was offering up that sacrifice for the Levites. And you was getting the Levites' day portion. Day 10%. You had to get a Levite his for. That's why I said, look in that place. But guess what? The Levites uh, ain't the priests no more. Now the most I call the 12,000 from each tribe, 144,000. Time for y'all to wait the hell up. Read on, bro. Acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. So now we offer no spiritual sacrifices. We don't have to go to Jerusalem and offer up those sacrifices three times a year no more. So what the hell you mean? Matter of fact, give me Judge 5 and 11. Judge 5 and 11. Talking about we can't keep the high holy days in the, uh, in the land of our captivity. When Christ sat up there and said, it's going to come a time when you ain't going to be able to worship in Jerusalem. So those who are going to worship the Father must worship him in spirit and truth. Meaning you're going to keep the words and you're going to keep the law and you're going to do the words in this book. Judges 5 verse 11. Judges chapter 5 and verse 11. They that are delivered from the noise of archers in the places of drawing water, there shall they re rehearse the righteous acts of the Lord. It said, man, there, they say, it say, they that are delivered from the noise of archers in the places of drawing water, there shall they rehearse the righteous acts of the Lord. Read. Even the righteous act, acts towards the inhabitants of his villages in Israel. It said towards the inhabitants of his villages in Israel. Read. Then shall the people of the Lord go down to the gate. That's why when we pray, we stand up and face the east and face towards Jerusalem. Face towards Israel, y'all. We rehearsing the righteous acts right now. Keep the law. 